Look at all of these hives that I need to requeen. There's 10 in total that need queens because I don't like the genetics and all of my splits, I'm just gonna give them new queens since I didn't like the genetics they were coming from anyway. So I did my best to learn everything I possibly can about grafting and I decided that instead of buying queens, I'm gonna graft them. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too late in the season. It is um, August 4th, or August 5th actually today in Michigan. So it's kind of pretty close because I'm gonna have to graft these queens. Pray that they take on my first try <laughs> and then hope that they can go out and get mated with no problems. Um, I'm gonna graft more queens than I need just in case I have losses because you gotta expect that. But yeah, so today is day one of learning how to graft and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So how convenient, I already had these from when I got my colonies. So I'm gonna learn how to graft in a nuke so today I'm going to go into hive number seven. It's my Saskatraz um, hive that showed up as only two mites. Let's see. Yep, hive number seven, only two mites. It's my best for building up the entire hive. Actually, it's my strongest hive in this yard. And as it says, my best honey producers too. The only ones that are really producing honey in this yard. Um, so, yeah, getting graft off of these. Oh, everything is still soaky wet from getting rained on yesterday. Oh, <laughs> they're so nosy. They always have to come and check out what's going on, I swear. <laughs> Honestly, there's probably no point in me wearing these gloves. They're soaking wet. Like, they're probably going to be able to sting me through the gloves. Oh, well. <laughs> So are you considered at the obsessed level when you start having dreams about your bees at night? Yeah. <laughs> also, I just want to remind you, I have never grafted before. This is my very first time. So you're about to witness so many mistakes and probably so much incorrect information. Um, so don't do as I say and don't do as I do. <laughs> just want to clarify. And more sugar water. Are you surprised? <laughs> didn't think so. <laughs> I just want to let you guys in on a little secret that I had like a light bulb moment of really the past couple days and that is that genetics when it comes to bees are everything. So I didn't realize just how important they were. I've noticed with a lot of my hives I'm like man like they're really not that productive. There must not be enough food in the area and yes that may be the case because I do have a lot of hives condensed in one area and there isn't a whole lot of, of uh, agriculture exactly where I am right now besides just um, corn and whatnot. So yeah, I already know that they're not gonna have that many resources, but I'm really starting to realize that actually no, it's bad genetics because some of my hives are ridiculously productive, but then my other ones, like they're barely doing anything. They're barely even hanging on. So. I guess that's like the secret in all of like beekeeping that I'm kind of starting to realize is that genetics are everything and that honestly it's kind of hard to get good genetics um, because when you're buying queens from just wherever commercial beekeepers, they're not going to give you the best queen they have. They're going to give you the hand-me-down queens that they don't really want anymore. Now, I'm not saying everybody's like that. There are some good beekeepers out there that are going to give you new fresh queens. They're not going to pan pick the genetics that they give you and all of that. But yeah, I'm just realizing that genetics are everything. If you're noticing your hive is not doing that well, it might not be your fault. It might be that you have a sucky queen and that you don't have good genetics. So that's why I'm breeding. <laughs> So since it's so late in the season, I am not going to bring in any VSH breeder queens just because it's really pointless. I wouldn't be able to get all the queens off of her that I'd want to. And honestly, I should probably practice before I get th before I get that queen. So I'm going to get her in the spring. Um, 
so that I can then breed off of her and rear a bunch of queens to spread amongst all of my colonies and then start rearing queens off of those to be able to sell to any of my northern climate folks so I can help you guys out get some better genetics. But so yeah, so the reason I'm picking this hive today is because as I was saying, a lot of my hives aren't that productive. Now some are, like they're mild, but then others are just kind of sucky. But this one is outstanding how productive it is. Like I'm amazed. It, it's the only one that's built up every single box. So, and this is a brand new hive this year. So yeah, we're gonna get some queens off of this hive so that I can help spread that high productivity, hopefully. <laughs> so in my research that I did last night, I came up with a couple things that are pretty important for what you need to be putting in your starting colony. So when I go through this hive, I'm going to be looking for two frames of food. One of them being fully capped honey, both sides, front and back. And then the other one being a lot of pollen and a lot of bee bread. The reason for this is you want to make the, the bees that you're putting in this box think that they have a surplus of food and that they have all the resources they could ever possibly need so that they want to send out swarms. So, and then the next thing that I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to put in two frames of capped brood because another key to making them want to swarm is to have a surplus of nurse bees. When they have all these nurse bees, they, the, the queen know, or the bees know that they have an excess amount of bees to be able to take care of the young and take care of the hive uh, then on later. My gosh, yeah, they're not happy <laughs> that I'm standing right here talking. I probably got pheromone on me from yesterday getting stung and stuff. But, um, but yeah, so you need to have a surplus of nurse bees. And then the next thing I'm putting in here is one frame of open brood. Now I'm doing this because I'm doing this two days before I'm planning to graft. All my equipment won't be here till Sunday, today's Friday. So I'm gonna put in one frame of open brood. And the reason I'm doing this is because when they realize they're queenless, they're gonna wanna start making a queen. And when they start making that queen, they're gonna produce a lot of royal jelly. So in all the videos I was watching last night and all of the articles I was reading, um, a lot of beekeepers were saying that usually the first round is not, not that successful because the bees weren't ready for all those queens. They didn't have all that royal jelly produced. So it's, it's wise to put in a frame of open brood beforehand, before you plan to put your grafts in so that they start producing that royal jelly. And then a plus, if they do start making queens, and they have larvae in those queen cups, you can open up those queen cups and use some of that royal jelly to put inside um, all of your little little grafting cups uh, so that the, the bee has more food right away already for them. And then it's a little easier from what they're, what they're showing in the video. It's a little bit easier to take the larva off of the instrument that you're using to graft. So that's why I'm doing that. So I'm looking for two frames of food, one honey, one bee bread, two frames of capped brood, and one frame of open brood. All right. <laughs> also, they're probably kind of pissy because I did notice there was a lot of robbing going on yesterday. So I closed a lot of these screens up, which I think really helped. But there was a flood of bees trying to rob everywhere here. Oh yeah, see, they're even filled all the way up here. That is good most productive hive indeed here let me help you i have a smushed bee up here and it's trying to take it out of the hive here there you go buddy there you go <laughs> okay i'll save you all the boring details of me being indecisive not knowing which frames i should take because <laughs> It seems like they like to put everything on one frame. I wish it was so simple as one frame is just brood, one frame is just honey. They do when they're really, really, really big, but yeah. So this is what I did. So as you can see, there are a lot of bees. I shook a lot of excess bees into here. 
I want them to feel like they're crowded and there are so many bees in here and they have so many resources. Have a frame of honey right here, frame of bee bread right here, and then capped brood right here with um, a little bit of uh, milk brood and some eggs actually mixed in. So I'm gonna have to go back through this to make sure there's no queen cells and make sure there's no young larva that they could possibly make into a queen um, in two days when I come back. But this is a good start. Also, I noticed that that colony had a lot of drones and they had a lot of queen cups. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe they're wanting to swarm anyway. So this will work out to my favor if they were. All right, so I will check back in in two days when I get all my supplies and when I'm grafting. Now, it wouldn't be grafting day without a good storm now, would it? I swear my luck, but I waited out the majority of it, so hopefully I don't get poured on. And yeah. <laughs> So I made this grafting frame today. Um, I definitely probably did it the hard way, but all I had on hand was a drill. So I drilled down an extra piece of um, like a sidebar to a frame. I drilled it down right here so that it would fit and then drilled some holes in it on both sides. Like I said, there was probably an easier way, but that's all I had at the time. So this will work. And I decided to try both the Chinese grafting tool and the German grafting tool. We'll see which one I like best. I'll try them out both. I also brought some more nooks. Um, I'm gonna take the three hives that I had split, those on that pallet and there's one over there, and I'm gonna move them into these nooks so they have less space to defend and I'm gonna move them to a different location just to prevent robbing and I also was informed that when you see a lot of bald brood in a line that usually that's wax moth and I did see that in the farthest one um, when I was checking on it a couple days ago so yeah nope getting on that stat gonna put them, put them in these boxes so that they do a little better. Let's go see how our starter colony is doing and see if they started making any queen cells. Just smoked them so they all went down a little bit. I'm watching this bee dig down into a cell and literally attack a small hive beetle. <laughs> I like that. Okay, good. Okay, so let's pick out our frame that we're going to be grafting from. Okay, I grabbed two frames that I'm gonna graft off of. So, let's get grafting. See how tiny they are? Makes it so hard to graft and so hard to see. The key is to get larva that is really young and it's supposed to be shaped like a comma, not C-shaped. So yeah, they're pretty small. And because I'm doing this on a waxed frame, that is what makes it even harder. <laughs> because it's so hot outside, it's like 95 degrees right now. Doesn't look like it, I know it's like all dreary outside, but it's humid and hot so this wax like i started to get down in there with this little tool and it pokes through the wax so you have to have very gentle steady hands <laughs> oh yeah they found me pretty quickly <laughs> no guys <laughs> So nosy. They can't just mind their own business. <laughs> okay, let's get these in there. Yeah, so <laughs> grafting definitely takes skill. Holy crap, that was difficult. I honestly probably killed more larva than I grafted, but I decided to graft all 45 because I know I messed up a couple. 
I was trying my best, but it's really hard. And on top of that, I was doing it on wax foundation. Like, yeah, not recommended, but that was the only frames that had the right age larva in the whole entire hive. So I had no choice but to use the wax foundation. So <laughs> if you're starting out at grafting, take, the, take that word from me. Don't do it on wax foundation. <laughs> Okay, we'll see what happens. Cross our fingers that it worked. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I feel like I messed up a lot of them. But yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I also made this to give them so that they feel like they have a surplus of food so that they make good queens. Um, that When I was researching, that's what a lot of people were saying was very important. So, this is just sugar, water, and a little bit of honey. So, yeah. I guess the only thing left to do is just close her up and check on her in a couple days to see if it worked. Oh, I really hope it did. <laughs> okay, I got all the hives fed. Got all of my weaker hives condensed down. <laughs> That's a lot of frames. Stay tuned to find out whether or not those queens actually took. I really hope they did um, because I really need them. I mean, I can, I can live without them. I can wait till next year if I have to, but yeah, I'd like to get everything started now. So stay tuned to find out if the queens actually worked and to keep following along on this whole breeding journey. So I'll see you guys in the next one.